In Python, we have a very powerful data structure called dictionary that is basically a collection of key value pairs. We use it to map a key to a value. A real world example of this is a phone book. In a phone book, we map a person's name to their contact details. So we use a person's name as the key and their contact information as the value. So a phone book is a dictionary. It's a collection of key value pairs. Now let me show you how to work with dictionaries in Python. So I'm going to define a variable point. We can set it to an empty dictionary or we can add one or more key value pairs here. Here's an example. We set X to one and Y to two. So in this example, I'm using a string for the key and an integer for the value. In Python, we can only use immutable types for the keys. So quite often we use strings and numbers, but the value can be of any type. There are no limitations. So here's one way to define a dictionary. We can also use the dict function, just like we have the list, tuple, and set functions. We also have the dict functions that we can use to create a dictionary. So let me redefine point by calling the dict function. So when we call this function, we pass one or more keyword arguments. Remember keyword arguments? So x equals one. This is a keyword argument. We can also set y to two. Now, I personally prefer the second approach because we don't have to deal with these quotes. I find this syntax a little bit cleaner and shorter. So now we have a dictionary. We can get the value associated with a key using an index. So point of x. Note that our index is the name of a key. So because dictionaries are collections of key value pairs, we cannot access an item using a numeric index as we do with lists. So here we're getting the value associated with the key x. Let's print it on the terminal. So we get one. Similarly, we can change the value of x to a new value. Now let's print our dictionary. So x is 10, y is two, beautiful. We can add a new key. So let's set z to 20 and then print the point. So now we have three key value pairs. Now, when reading a value, if we use an invalid key, we'll get an error. So let's look up the value of the item with the key A and then print this, run the program. We get this error, key error. There are two workarounds here. One solution is to check for the existence of a key. So if A in point, then we'll get the value of the item with key A and print it. Now, you don't get the error anymore. The other solution is to use the get method. So instead of using brackets and the name of the key, we call the get method. Here we pass the name of the key. Let's print it. So if the key doesn't exist, by default, it returns none. Or we can pass a default value as a second argument. So we say, hey, if you don't have an item with the key A, return zero by default. Let's take a look. Now we get zero, beautiful. To delete an item, we use the del or delete statement. So delete point of X. Now let's print point and look at the result. So X is gone. We only have Y and Z. So these are the basic operations around dictionaries. We can easily add new items, remove existing ones and look up items by their key. Finally, let me show you how to loop over dictionaries. So if we write a simple for statement for X in point, let's see what we get. We get Y and Z. So in each iteration, our loop variable will hold the key of an item. So it's better to rename this to key. Now we can print the key as well as the value associated with the key. So we write point of key. As you can see, Y is two and Z is 20. There is another way to iterate over a dictionary. So here we can call point dot items. Now let me rename key to X and just print X. Let's see what we get. So in each iteration, 
we get a tuple. In this tuple, we have the key and the value. So we can unpack it right here. We can extract key and value and simply print them here like this. When we run the program, we get the same result. 